This is the Roy Chatters Newspaper and Printing Museum in Palouse, Washington. It is staffed by only a few volunteers, of which I am one. Janet Barstow, the primary caretaker and docent at the museum, does a wonderful job of sharing the museum with visitors from 10 till 2 on most every Saturday. Here at the museum, one can learn the history of letterpress, the printing technology that changed the way America and the world communicated. Machines like the Linotype, Intertype, and Flatbed Cylinder Press are on display amongst many other artifacts here at the museum. Of course, some think that history is just boring, thinking of it as nothing more than old facts to fill old books. After all, they're just dates and facts and figures that no one cares about, right? Not in my book. Often, history is taught this way, in a manner that makes the history appear dead. This happened a long time ago, it was significant, but who really cares anyways? That is not how history should be preserved or perpetuated. History is so far removed from oneself when it is merely spoken about in a class or read about in a book. History is made up of stories, stories which have the ability to captivate us if told well. That then is the mission for history museums, to tell their stories well. Telling stories in the museum field is called interpretation. This is where my studies in digital technology and culture come in quite handy. For my DTC 336 final project this semester, I am adding new digitally created interpretive signage to the Roy Chatters Newspaper and Printing Museum. This new signage quickly identifies a historical object or practice, explains its use, the way it was used, and usually an interesting fact about it. Some of these signs reach into the 3D tactile dimension as well, as actual small artifacts are loosely mounted on some of the signs. This allows the viewer to pick up and examine the small artifacts up close. It's called hands-on history, and it's part of a greater concept of living history. Living history, as I see it, is the only way that many museums are going to survive from one generation to the next. Just looking around at a collection of old objects isn't likely to instill a lifelong passion in preserving those objects for someone of a younger generation. Our history museums need to change from being look at this places to do this places. The Roy Chatters Museum is a do this sort of place. The museum has a working type shop for those who would still like to learn how to set their own type. Some of the presses in the museum's collection do still operate, and it is possible that more of the machines could be made operational in the future. Our nation's history museums need younger volunteers. Someone has to learn the history and pass it on to the next generation. Why let historic trades just be forgotten altogether? I would charge every one of you, if you even have the smallest interest in historical preservation, restoration, or interpretation, give museum volunteering a chance. You may be surprised where you'll find yourself when you step back in time and walk a mile in your ancestors' shoes.